Hey, hey folks, and welcome to the latest installment of Dave's Impressions. This time, never alone, as the title disappears from view. Well, that was unfortunate timing. Uh, this is a side-scrolling platformer from, geez, how long ago is it? I think it's like 2014. Um, and I remember buying this at the time because it was like, uh, it was made by the native peoples of, I think, Alaska, or at least somewhere in Canada. And it's a game uh, showcasing one of their uh, myths, which I thought was really cool. I never really gave it a fair shake at the time, though, so it went on the list of games I need to give a fair shake. Oh, uh, and here we are. So, uh, I'll be playing this one for about 30 minutes. Without further ado, let's get started. The Inupiat are an Alaska native people who have thrived for thousands of years in one of the most formidable environments on Earth. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this, the cultural insights thing. Um, every now and then you unlock a small video that shows how they <laughs> live, parts of the culture. No, run, dear, run! <laughs> well, bird's just as good, I guess. Oh, poor dear. Oh, dear. Oh, narwhal. Ah, that's probably a seal. This looks like a horn. Well, seeing this is a myth, it isn't climate change. Ooh, Scrimshaw, I can already watch that, can I? Hey, there we go. So Scrimshaw is this really beautiful method of art that's done either on baleen or ivory, and traditionally it was used to tell stories. In searching is telling a story of some event. Oh. Uh, caribou hunting was taking place. This is what was going on. Some War FPS problems there. Around this time. And so it sort of gives you a timeline of history through etching. An elder or the person who carved it would literally be able to read the Scrimshaw story. They're like reading a book, in a way. A lot of the storytelling traditions would be things that, after the storytelling was done, we'd just rely on the next person telling it. And so Scrimshaw is a very important way for Alaskan Native people to record their history. Oh, it's really cool. And these aren't too long either, so... I was worried, you know, saying, um, I want to watch this, uh, but I might cut into game time. Oh, look at that. There's more. Uh, oh. Why not? I mean, this is why we're here, right? To One learn. One of the things I think a lot of people need to understand is we aren't a museum piece. The Inupiaq people are a living people and a living culture. Even though we're in northern Alaska, which covers this vast area from Nome all the way over the Canadian border, is that there is this extreme value of interconnectedness and interdependence. It's a hunting society, a gathering society, from thousands of years. This is what creates our culture. That special relationship between humans and the natural world and the animals. And the cold. And that it teaches you how to have a, a society that doesn't do too much harm to the world. 
love and respect for nature, for one another, for our elders, very, very fundamental value, key to, key to life. Our values are something that bind us all. The importance of sharing with one another, the importance of spirituality, and the connection mm. to the land, our traditions. Did these uh, videos not download properly? Is that what's going on? And dances. I'm Inipak. I'm from the Arctic Ocean. It's very important to me. It's, it's who I am as a person. And we're very proud of who we are. And we want to continue that. Yeah, I guess just think of this as like the starting cutscenes for the game. It's uh, laying the setting. It'd be busy, busy, busy all through the day. You get up and you just go right to work, you know, right to work. There's always something to do. There's never any idle time. The only idle time we had was after we eat and before we go to bed. One of the older people would just be just relaxing, laying down there and saying, you know, it would be really nice to hear a story. And then just organically, someone would just start telling a story. Storytelling for the Nupiak people is very important because it not only created that sense of community, but is a way to pass on wisdom to the next generation. It was like TV, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, it was as good as anything, you, any movie you've ever seen. And the storyteller told it so clearly that it was just as powerful as any of the greatest movie blockbusters you've ever seen. Man, this there's a reason behind the desyncing audio. It's not old. good, man. They held traditional knowledge. They held things that we might need to know in life, whether it was about how to find food or how to survive, or it was about like, well-being and the importance of connecting with people and being a good member of the community. We all do stories. We all live in stories. We all tell stories to our friends. And, and they need to be told. They need to be heard. And now that we've watched this, let's see how the story is told through the game. Yet another method of telling stories. Maybe I need to v-sync it. Huh? Maybe that's why the videos are going nuts. Oh no. <laughs> yes, indeed, run. Oh man. Remember once I went to a science museum and they had a um all these uh, taxidermied animals and had brown bear, black bear, and a grizzly and a polar bear all standing next to each other. And the polar bear was just so much larger than any other bear. And like the grizzly was just huge. Oh, I couldn't even imagine seeing one in real life. It would be terrifying. I'm not tasty. Go away. No, that's not nice. Fox to the rescue! Can I pet the fox? No, oh, can't pet the fox. No, oh, look at it. It's so cute. 
Weather did not clear up as the blizzard was followed by yet another blizzard. So what's the new insight? No? Okay, got no new ones to watch. <laughs> so cute. A girl and her fox. Ah, the owls give you new insight. The owls are not what they seem. Oh, you get to see video of the Arctic fox. Look at them. <gasps> so cute. When I was growing up, uh, my grandpa uh, had a pet white fox. If you're a good friend with a fox, when there's danger abound, they try to keep you from getting into no. trouble. They pull tricks here and there. And What's the old saying? Are Foxes are cat software on dog hardware. Cats in that way. When you let her out, she go prancing out in the snow, jumping in the air. I know she is happy then. Oh, come running at me and jump on my chest, knock me backwards, lick my face, and, and I try not to let her. So that was my memory of my grandpa's pet fox. Adorable. Fox, tap A to climb the wall. Aw, oh, look at it. The fox can lower a rope? Okay. The rope's already there. I'm like, since when do foxes have our rope? One of these puzzles. Ugh. Gotta shield yourself from the wind. Actually, it really wasn't one of those puzzles. <gasps> Splat. Ah, cool. I can brace against the wind. That's good. skin clothing. Was <laughs> These are like the highlight of the game so far. For us in many ways. Our clothing in those days was made of all caribou skin. I grew up wearing caribou pants, mittens, caribou skin mattress, blankets. Some people had boots that were made with wolf leggings, sealskin sole bottoms. Banning was shaved to make insoles. They kept us quite dry and warm as well. But the caribou skin clothing was the best. We would get as many yearlings as we could for our outer clothing. And for a heavy winter, we would get caribou in February or March because the hair was the longest and the skin was the thickest. And we would use those for our winter gear. With that stuff on, you could sleep outside in 50 below and it wouldn't bother you a bit. Wow. I guess caribou aren't insulated. Oh, that's weird. So the fox is guiding the spirits, but what kind of spirits are those? Hey! Another insight. <laughs> Celia is the weather. 
It also means the atmosphere. Here's the Numa. Ah, the that's land. the name of the girl. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Sila. It's, uh, it's a very spiritual, and we have a relationship with Sila. Uh, Sila has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be mm -hmm. that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's not one way of seeing things. It's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra from which you pick berries, the animals that give themselves. It's, it's all, of, all of that. That's very nice. And I think this video kind of showed me a solution to a puzzle that's coming up. Damn. That winter wind. That's what gets you, right? Spirit helper. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, spirit helpers. <laughs> the trapping trail. So let's see, there's twenty four of these and already seven so we're about to get eight that's a third of the way through i know this isn't a long game but it like the gameplay does keep getting broken up by uh, these videos which i'm enjoying but i can see how someone maybe would leave them to the end or wouldn't like watching these documentaries as they're playing through a game in Canada, they call them igloo. To me, here, though, in Alaska, we call uh, them they're Apuya. the more enjoyable part at the moment because the, the platforming travel, has been rather rudimentary, I guess, and very Apuya. simple. The next day, my father would set traps, spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at Dubai. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. We just visit with them, and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other, and they'd talk away while us kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother, and then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into 
85 kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different time. We're in ecological time. I think the reason I'm enjoying the video so much is that like the point of playing a game like this is not for the gameplay, although the gameplay is telling us uh, one of their myths, one of their stories. Oh dear. Oh, and that, that kills her. Yeah, diving into freezing cold water would. Um, but yeah, it's it's all the extra information, like learning about the culture, learning about the people. That it's it's games as teaching tools. Like um, there is a video I have in my critique list about a game called Torin made by a Brazilian studio, and I always wondered about that game whether you know it was um, whether it was a myth of the Brazilian people. And actually very similar to uh, 1979 Revolution Black Friday, another game I did a critique about, about the Iranian Revolution. And just, in both those cases, it's like, you know, the power of games to be able to impart stories and uh, culture and history, a time and a place, just like a novel, really, how a game can really put a player into a time and a place. How important that is. Again, like no, I often think of novels as empathy machines, and especially for other cultures, um, the ability to play a game embodying another culture, especially one outside of my own, is um, very uh, important. It's the only the only way we're gonna get better as humans. And, foster of love and kindness and compassion and understanding of each other is if we engage with uh, how people in different parts of the world live that are not like us. Oh no. It's a JRPG <laughs> trope. You go back to your village and it's been destroyed. <sighs> Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Yeah, I think the insights, uh, that idea of the watching insights, so if you don't want to watch them as you're playing, these loading screens remind you, hey, you know, it's been a little while, why not go back and watch all the things you've unlocked? It is said that with each gust of wind, the powdery snow blew in every direction. Oh. Come on, Loon. Help me out, Loon. So the fox can get up there. How do we get the Loon to come back? Hmm. 
we haven't reached like an impasse. Let's reset the checkpoint. I get a feeling like um, the loon was supposed to reset, but it didn't. Hello, loon. Hey, that's better. Thank you, loon. Ooh, laughter. Oh, is that the fox? Ooh, there's something in the brush. Whoa! <laughs> oh, and there my alarm goes. I'm still hearing, um... I kind of want to see what it is before we stop. Come on, Fox. Stick together. Ooh. Under the little spirits. Uh, I better stop there. Okay. I want to play more. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm definitely adding this one to my critique list. This is very pleasant. I'm, again, I just love uh, how, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel it's a lot like the enjoyment I get. The, the enjoyment I get from reading books is very similar to the enjoyment I get from playing games in that it's able to immerse me in a world uh, so unlike my own. Now, the, the benefit of a novel is to get you right inside a character's head. Um, so I think they are better suited uh, for empathy and for understanding um, times and places and people that one may not be used to. Games have this power, uh, but they have to go about it in a different way. Like the, this is a choice here, you know, to pepper uh, documentaries in while having the character play a story from these people. And it's working, but it feels a bit choppy. Um, still, I'm, I'm engaged. I really want to watch more of these videos. I want to learn more about... Uh, God, I can't even remember the name of the tribe, let alone want to pronounce it. But yeah, I want to learn more about them. I want to see how this story plays out. Um, I like the fox. I like the spirits. It's, um, it's something new and yet something very old. So yeah, uh, please tell me what you thought about uh, this game and this episode down in the comments. Uh, tell me if you liked what it was, uh, what it was trying to do. If you played it yourself, um, love to know. And until next time, see you later. Bye, everyone.